What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divos? What's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome back to my channel. Y'all already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday. What's up, you guys? What's up, everybody? What's up? Came through. Your girl A is here. We about to talk about some shit, some stuff. I hope y'all all are having like a really great day, an amazing day, a blessed day. Whenever you're watching this video, you already know. What's up, you guys? So thank you all for coming back and staying tuned with my channel. It is Real Talk Wednesday. And I am here, okay? I hope y'all had, like, a really great weekend, the beginning of the week, you know what I'm saying? All of that good stuff. Your girl came through, look, today, okay, today I decided I'm going to rock me a little curly bang. You know what I'm saying? My little curly bang. Girl, let me tell y'all. First of all, let me just tell y'all this. I just feel like my hair, I don't, it just not, it's not that I just feel, I know, I know. My hair is getting so thin, just like thin and thin and thin to where I can see my scalp. Y'all see the scalp right there, right? So I'm just like, what am I supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? I use the drops. I have, wa I wash my hair. I moisturize my hair. I make sure that I brush it with a detangling brush. You know, I put moisturizer in it every day because I do like my little curly you know ponytail so i have moisturizer that i put in it every day so it doesn't dry out and i do sleep with a bonnet on but it just seems like it's just getting thinner and thinner and thinner and i also do take hair vitamins now these hair vitamins were um suggested to me from some of my divas and i like them i do take them but here's the thing they are capsule pills and you ever take a capsule pill and you can feel it stuck right here now it isn't like a small capsule pill it's kind of a big size capsule pill so every time i take it you got to take two of them a day it feels like it's stuck right here and i'll just keep drinking water and keep drinking water and keep drinking water and that shit still feel like it's stuck right here so i really don't take it as much as i should because of those reasons so i I have to find me another pill that like is not a capsule pill is not like a horse pill either because god damn okay you know so i've been doing those things to take care of my hair so this past weekend i washed my own hair um tati didn't wash it for me i washed it myself because i had just sweated the hell out of my hair all in the back i can sweat and i felt it all in my hair so i said i'm gonna wash my hair plus i got some different conditioner which i've been using for years and i hadn't used it in years okay but i was using it for years and when i was living in new york the dominican woman who used to take care of my hair she used the same product which is mane and tail you know the mane and tail with the horse on the bottle i used that so i went back and i purchased that now prior to this okay a few weeks ago a couple weeks back remember i told you that tati had washed my hair for me and it felt so good it just felt so good the curls was even tighter the coils of the curls was even tighter and it felt really really well well probably like two days two days after she watched it washed it for me i look on youtube and everybody not everybody but enough people are complaining that the product was taking their hair out in clumps which was the Mayel organics now this is what she used on me she used the whole entire collection from the drops to such and such Girl, when I tell you when I washed my hair this past Friday and I was in the shower washing it, this time I took my time, y'all, okay? Because like the last time I told y'all, I'll be just trying to get it over and done with. So this time I took my time. Now, I didn't have a comb or a brush in the shower with me. So I just, you know, first I shampooed it. I definitely shampooed it because it was just sweaty and it had enough product buildup in it. It was just sweaty too. So I, I shampooed it. I shampooed it twice so that way I knew that it was, you know, clean. And then, you know, as I was rinsing it out and so forth, clumps of my hair were in my hand and i did take a picture of it so hopefully if i don't forget i'll definitely upload it so you guys can see that but um let me let me see if i could show you guys right now while we're talking so i don't know if it's from that product but i did want to hurry up and wash it out of my hair only because of you know what i had heard now mind you before that my hair was already getting thin you know what i'm saying and i don't wear wigs like that like when you guys see me wear a wig it's when i'm doing a video okay on a normal monday through friday saturday and sunday day i'm just like this hair pulled back because where am i going to wear a wig i don't go anywhere i stay in the house you know what i'm saying so the most places i'm going is to bring the kids to from school and daycare and maybe run a couple of errands so i don't really need a wig on i don't get dressed up like that and i feel like this this is my natural hair if you can't accept me for my natural hair then i don't know what to tell you but i do like to wear my natural hair out especially because it's so hot out here and also ever since i had my full hysterectomy it has been kind of hard for me to keep a wig on all day like seriously i get like these bad tension headaches in the back and it just it's just unbelievable like i can't do it so i i really try not to wear a wig every day um when i do decide to go out and get dressed 
up or what have you and wear a wig I do wear it um, but I won't have on a full wig I'll have on like a headband wig and sometimes they may put on a lace wig but when I get home baby that thing is coming off you know what I'm saying so this is this is hopefully y'all can see that this is the amount of hair that came out okay this is my hair and this is the amount of hair that came out if y'all can see that this is yeah this is the amount of hair that came out and it, it may look like a lot from the picture because i zoomed it in but if you see it like that then you know if you see like this right there that's that's the amount so it still does look like a lot now mind you when i tell you it looks like you can see my scalp there is no it looks like you fucking can see my scalp and i don't know like okay see right here now this is my scalp after i washed it that day this is what it's looking like and i'm not sure what's going on but i do know that some of my hair fell out only because of my vein disease now i don't know what's going on with the rest because it just seems like it's coming out more frequently and i'm not sure if it's because i don't have certain hormones anymore because of my hysterectomy i also know that my own mom my mother she lost a lot of her hair all up in the front area now my mom don't wear wigs ever but she did have a thyroid issue okay and she had a thyroid issue and it was it made her hair come out a lot now she has been using the rogaine and she said it grew back but when you stop using it it just falls right out so she i don't think she uses it anymore but i'm wondering is this like hereditary like is this hereditary is this alopecia like what is what can possibly make your hair just keep falling out like thinning like this like is it because i'm getting older i, I just i'm trying to figure this out what the hell is going on and like it's very like it does make you feel a little um self-conscious about yourself because we, we 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 women want we do want our hair we love to have full long locks and i'm i'm wanting that but i'm not getting that anymore i'm not i don't know if it's the water here i'm not getting it though i really been trying to try different styles with my own natural hair but it's so thin that i just really don't want to bother so i am i have made up my mind to get sister locks and I love the look of them. They're thinner. You don't really have to do much with your hair. You could put it in a ponytail. You could do a lot of different styles with it. The young lady who said they would do it for me is also a family friend. She lives up here now from New York. She was my son Wuzzle's best friend. She is my stepson's girlfriend, as I explained to you guys before. She does braids. She does all of my daughter's braids. All my daughter's hair, she does their braids. So she didn't do, um, she doesn't actually do um, sister locks only because of the time it takes but she did tell me girl if we could do them like in two days i'll do them for you honey i'm two days i'm not, two days i was thinking about a week because i'm not about to listen i'm the type of person i can't sit still for too long and two days is still a, a, sh a short stretch that's like i'm still sitting there for like eight hours april don't sit still for eight hours now i give you two hours so we might have to break that up into five days and i'm cool with going back five days it don't even have to be next day next day it could be you know sporadically spread out okay that's how that's how confident i am that it'll get done so I, i've been thinking a lot about that because i did want to put braids in my hair and then i'm like i can't do braids because i get i have to do my wig videos but with sister locks you can still do wigs you can still wear wigs you know my girl be love here on youtube she has sister locks and what i noticed about her is it's making her hair fuller it looks like her hair has gotten thicker and I, i'm hoping the same for me you know what i'm saying so we shall see you know what i'm saying i want my hair to grow back and i want it to get long and full and I just feel like maybe that'll work for me instead of pulling it back in a ponytail all the time like I do. Girl, when I tell you I had to like put some stuff, you can see my scalp and I'm very self-conscious about that. Like I'm very self-conscious about that. And I really don't want to wear a wig because it's too hot out here and I start getting tension headaches. And I just really want to wear my own natural hair. You know what I'm saying? I've grown this. I, I, want, I want to wear my own natural hair at times when I feel like it. When I want to wear a wig, I want to wear a wig. I don't want to wear a wig because I have no hair and I have to. You know what I'm saying? But I want to wear one when I feel like it's necessary like today i put on my own hair i wore my own hair you know what i'm saying i was gonna put the wig back on for y'all but i was like girl look i'm gonna come through with my little curly bang and they're gonna like that i think i look rather cute okay with my curly bang so anyway this past weekend we just chilled out okay so saturday um Mumsy went to see Beetlejuice with her friends. And then Sunday, me and Mumsy were going to go to the swap meet out here. I love the swap meet. I haven't been in like about a year and a half. So, you know what I'm saying? I felt like, let's just go to the swap meet. The real reason why I wanted to go to the swap meet is because I was going to purchase some Muslim oils off of Amazon. And, you know, I was sitting on Amazon for like an hour reading all these different reviews about these Muslim oils and how some people liked the scents and some people didn't. And I just felt like, you know what? I am not about to waste my money and time on Amazon 
Muslim oils. I'm gonna go to the swap meet because there is the vendor there and they have a huge booth where they sell every single Muslim oil, every single incense you can imagine from the jumbo ones to the medium ones to the small ones. When I tell you they have every single incense in the world among shirts and bags and all kinds of soaps, let me tell you, and they're very nice. They're very friendly people. So I said, I'm gonna go there because at least I know that these are gonna be Muslim oils. Now I love Muslim oils. I remember my mom purchasing them off of the street side vendors when I was a teen and my favorite one was Egyptian musk so we decided we was gonna go to the um to the swap meet and Muzzy wanted to look at makeup I wanted to get me some incense and Muslim oils so that's what we did like I said it was gonna be me and Mumsy and then I invited Tinky because he has some money and he wasn't able to find anything the night prior at Walmart because you know kids want to spend their money so I invited him to come along so it's just gonna be me Mumsy and Tinky okay and Tato and Tati was gonna stay home. Tati didn't wanna come. So as we were leaving, we were like leaving. We was putting on our shoes to go. And Tato, of course, she was up. She was running down around downstairs. She went in the closet and got her sandals. Okay, now mind you, she wasn't dressed. She only had on a diaper and a t-shirt and her hair wasn't done. So she refused to put her shoes back. So she invited herself. So she came along too. And it was cool because she was good. We got in the car, we got the stroller. We had a great time. I really thought it was gonna be cool. like. A little bit cooler because it was the day before and it was a little bit hot i had my curly bangs out girl i don't know why i sweated my bangs out like you know i was sweating i was so red but i was able to find my muslim oil and tinky got a nice um toy tato got a bubble gun a bubble a uh, bubble gun that she loves okay mumsy got um she got a couple things. She's got a Hello Kitty stuffy and some perfume. They have great perfumes, not from the Muslim oils, but just vendors in general. They have like really great replicas, inspired scents for $10, you know what I'm saying? So she got one of those. I got some makeup. I, I got a highlight. Girl, they have this other booth there that is, if you guys live in Phoenix, you gotta go to the Phoenix parking swap. It's off of Washington Ave, but you can also look up Greyhound Phoenix parking swap and then you'll find it like that too. They're only open Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, they open Wednesday morning, Wednesday from four to ten, um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They open three days out the week, okay? Uh, four days out the week, excuse me. Um, and you really do. They really open on Saturday and Sundays. They open at six a.m. because you know it gets hot out here. But anyway, so I went to this one huge booth. It's huge. You can walk through it and everything. They have like really great makeup, all kind of little in inexpensive makeup. So I got this by the brand J Cat. This highlighter. I thought this highlighter was so pretty, and so I do have it on right now. I, I love highlighters. I don't know what it is, but I love a good highlight. And this color, it's not really given off camera, but it's it's a really pretty color. It looks really good on my skin like you see it y'all see on my cheeks and stuff i like highlighters i like highlighters but so i was able to get my muslim oils when i tell you that this brought back so many memories you ever put on some type of perfume music it's just so nostalgic because it brings back memories when i tell you that this stuff smells so good okay mm, i put some on last night as i got out the shower you know what i mean i rubbed my my skin was still a little damp Plus, I also put on my body glaze and you can either choose a roller method. You could just have the pour method or the drops. Now, I've never had it with the drops. So I just said, oh, I'm going to do the drops. Now, of course, the price is not the same from back in the days when I was a teenager. I think this bottle would have cost my mom five dollars back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Like five dollars. Like, let me know. Have you guys ever worn Muslim oils? I know you have. What do you think about Muslim oils and how much were you paying for a bottle like this back in the day? So mind you. It smells just like back in the days, still lingering. I can still smell myself after my shower last night, still smelling good. And I just put on today, I added a little bit of my favorite new perfume by Dossier, which is Musky Musk. Oh my God, intense, intense, intense. But so that's what I did. I got my Egyptian musk. I want to know what you guys' favorite musk is from the um, Muslim oils. Now I also got this one, the Dolce & Cabana incense the egyptian musk incense and the white diamond incense these are the good incense okay these are the good ones girl you got to get the good ones you got to get the muslim ones okay these are the good ones this if you know you know okay if you know you know but other than that let's just just jump into this we're gonna have a word from our sponsor and then we're gonna jump into this real talk today's video is being sponsored by she glam where all beauty products are cruelty free she glam is a cosmetic brand that aims to make beauty products affordable and accessible to everyone, such as their new Sunbeam Shimmer and Matte Bronzing Collection, which do come in a variety of different shades. 
These retail for $5.99 on SheGlam.com. As well as that, they are introducing their new SunScope Liquid Contour, which also retails for $5.99 on their website. She Glam offers a range of beauty products, including makeup for lips, eyes, and face, along with tools and accessories needed for your makeup application. Check out She Glam. I will link everything in the description below. Matt Terracotta. Shimmer Terracotta. Mud Pie. Matte Mud Pie. Shimmer Mud Pie. Earthy Sophia. Matte Sophia. Shimmer Earthly Sophia. Hickory. Matte Hickory. Shimmer Hickory. One left, umber, and this is a matte. I don't have the shimmer in umber. So these was all of the bronzers. Now we're gonna try the contour. Maple syrup. Warm honey. Camel Suede, Cedar, and last, Carob Chip, Okay, you guys, so if you want to have a real talk with me, go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk, or you can also use aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk, so that way when I'm searching it up on my email, I can find it properly in case it goes to spam. Please make sure to let me know in the video, or excuse me, in the email, if you decide to change the names of the people you're speaking of, or if you'd like to keep them as is, or if you'd like to me to change them. Other than that, girl, let's jump into this real talk. Okay. ladies so this one is subjected real talk why does everyone have hiv okay hey april you can call me antoinette and my friend v v's been my friend for so long and she's got with this dude who i warned her about she swore he changed he wasn't what i thought he was anymore he was a different person so long story short she and i met this guy while we was out together shopping at the local mall he came up to v and spoke said hello to both of us she and the guy who we can call Morty spoke for a couple of minutes and then exchanged numbers. As soon as we was out of distance from Morty, I then began to tell her he was no good, had multiple baby mothers, slept around with multiple women and still stood on the street corner while allegedly living with his first baby mother because he had nowhere to go. She took everything I said into somewhat consideration but still decided to see for herself and hit him up. Now, April, I'm not big on expensive things. I'm not that type of woman, but there is no way you are about to bring me to a local fast food Chinese spot in the hood for our first date. She went along with the date and still wasn't really taking what I said about Morty serious. 
Well, four and a half years later, V is still semi-messing with this fool. She went to her physician to get tests done, STD tests, you know, the regular, and an HIV test, which I was the one to convince her to get one because she really didn't feel the need. April, her test came back positive for HIV and gonorrhea. All she could do is cry to me over the phone when she found out. I tried to console her, but April, I already tried to warn her she wouldn't listen to me. This dirty dog ass ninja infected her and who knows if she's the only one. I'm sure she isn't. I honestly don't know what I can do for her. I wanted her to leave him be. He wasn't worth her time or her body. And here he is giving women STDs and HIV. April, I'm not understanding what's going on with society. There have been so many known cases pop up of women being infected with HIV. My friend did inform that dirty dick ninja what he had done, but of course he is trying to deny it. April, he's the only man she's been messing with all of these years. Is there anything you can suggest? Please help. Thank you in advance. Now, what is her name? Antoinette. I don't know why y'all be having me talk about these real tough subjects and like my opinion, because my opinion is this. She should have listened to you from the get go. If you was telling her all of this, I'm pretty sure she found out he had multiple baby mothers because it ain't that hard to find out if a nigga got multiple baby mothers. OK, and if you got multiple baby mothers, why do you even want to mess with the person in the first place? That means that he's going to be broke all the time. That's why he went to the fast food Chinese spot in the hood for, for their date. Now, listen, I ain't even going to front on the fast food Chinese spots in the hood because they good. Those Chinese food spots in the hood is good. I don't know about y'all, but they be making the best fucking fried chicken, okay? Yes, hello, okay? And I know it's not authentic cuisine of Asians, but I'm gonna tell you what, I love the Chinese food restaurants, I love the Chinese buffets, and I love the Chinese food, okay? It's good to me. Now, I don't know about that for a first date. I don't know if I really want to sit there because the ones in the hood, you probably got like two or three tables and normally they're not that great of an environment, but we could take the food to go and I will definitely eat that on the first day. I'm not a picky person. We stay in our budget. Let me get to know who you are. But did Antoinette already tell the who dude was? He got multiple baby mothers. He stands on the corner and he lives with one of his baby mothers because he ain't got nowhere to go. Mm, mm, mm. You know something that's so crazy? Because Antoinette is right about this this whole HIV thing. Now, I don't know why it keeps popping up on my YouTube feed, but I've been seeing a lot lately. When I tell y'all I've been seeing a lot lately, I have been seeing a lot lately on my YouTube feed about women being infected with HIV. And sadly to say, these women are all black women, okay? I'm not sure if people are just going around freaking off, but maybe if you do so you might want to cover up so i keep seeing all of these hiv commercials like you know for the pills and such things like that i don't know but i've been seeing a lot of them and i really feel like with this day and age you gotta investigate a person like seriously if your friend of years tells you that this person is no good and they got multiple baby mothers and they they homeless because this is a homeless ninja okay they homeless and they stand on the street corner you might really want to take that into consideration you know what i'm saying like it ain't like back in the days when people was cool they wasn't running rampant i mean aids was running rampant when it first uh was came out you know what i'm saying or hiv some people just have full-blown aids because it wasn't known there was no medication and i and i pity I, i'm just like I empathize with these people that have gone through or their family members have gone through the pain of full-blown AIDS. Now, luckily, this day and age, there is medication that can help people live longer and not even get sick. Like, it's what is it, like dormant? You don't even know. But I really think that you should tell a person that you do have HIV in case you get in a relationship. You don't want to infect anyone else. You know what I'm saying? But she, Antoinette did warn her. And unfortunately, she didn't warn her about the HIV because she didn't know that. But she did warn her about the type of person that Morty was. He was a hoe, a homeless hoe. OK, a broke homeless hoe. You standing on a corner. What is he standing on the corner doing? Is he selling on a corner? Um, what is he doing standing on the corner? Because I don't think she said that. And it came to me. Step around multiple women. No, she just says he's 
uh, and still stood on he slept around with multiple women and still stood on the corner while um still stands on the corner while allegedly living with his baby his first baby mother because he had nowhere to go so here's my thing how many kids does this dude have is what i'm wondering she said multiple multiple to me is more than two shit multiple to me it might be even more than three i don't know what y'all feel like it's multiple but if you was to tell me that he has multiple baby mothers he stands on the street corner and he lives with one of his baby mothers that's a no-go the first one is a no-go that you could tell me either one one at a time you could have just told me one of those and it's a no-go i don't really care which one you told me if you told me he stood on the street corner that's a no if you told me he lived with his first baby mama because he's a homeless bum that's a no if you told me he had multiple baby mother that's a no so you could have just picked one for me and i would have went along with it like okay thanks for letting me know and i would have gave out my phone number you know what i'm saying it's crazy because men are so weird at times and so are women too but if your friend tells you about somebody like they literally are warning you like girl stay away from him you know what i'm saying Woosa or whatever you should really take that into consideration they've been friends for years some people might have felt like oh well she's just hating because he didn't speak to her she's not hating she's definitely not hating and she's definitely not hating on her um circumstances right now now here's the sucky thing he didn't gave you hiv and he gave you gonorrhea what the fuck he's a dirty dick motherfucker he's definitely a dirty dick so i'm pretty sure that v is not the only one he's got multiple baby mothers i'm pretty sure one of them has contracted something from him the only thing that i can suggest to you antoinette in this manner because this is your friend and you have to be there for her i'm so sorry that she had to call you up under those circumstances you just have to be there for her as a friend it's unfortunate that you already did warn her, but you can't go back on your word and say, well, I told you so, I told you so. Never tell, never do that to a person. Well, I told you, girl, not to mess with him because she's already feeling bad. You don't want her to feel worse. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't want her to feel worse than what she already feels. So the one thing that I can suggest to you is just to be a friend to her. You know what I'm saying? Help her along the way. Help her with her visits to the doctor if she wants you to come along. Or even suggest, hey, you want some company? I ain't got nothing to do. I'll come along with you. You know what I mean? Make sure that she eats healthy. She remains healthy. And just be there for her as a shoulder to cry on. I'm pretty sure she's going to leave this guy alone. But here's the one thing that what I really do think that you should do, in my opinion, because you said, what do I, what would I suggest? She said, my friend did inform that dirty dick ninja what he had done. But of course, he is trying to deny it. So here's the thing. Is there anything you can suggest? Y'all gonna call me a snitch, but I'm gonna tell you what I would suggest. I would suggest taking your ass to the Department of Health and letting them know who this dirty dick motherfucker is and giving his name out so that way that they can bring him in. Because you know, giving somebody HIV knowingly is a, against the law. He can go to jail for this. There are like lots of cases that men do this purposely, which is sad because like, why would you want to ever threaten anybody's life with something that they could have avoided? Why would you ever want to do that? You know what I'm saying? So what I would do, that's what I would suggest. I would su suggest you call the Department of Health and let them know, hey, my friend has contracted HIV and gonorrhea from a man who I warned her about and he has multiple women, multiple baby mothers, and this is who he is. And she did inform him, this is the only guy she's been sleeping with, but he's been going around purposely denying that he has HIV and probably purposely giving it out to women. This is what I would do. This is what I would do. I surely would, because I know back in the day when you had a partner or you know say you had a partner and you had a sexually transmitted disease back in the day, the Department of Health would contact your partner. They would want to know the name and they would want to either go to, they would go to their houses. I never forget, I seen one of them knocking on my neighbor's door, Department of Health, and it was for that reason, okay? That's one way how I found out about it. But after I was told that, excuse me, after I was told that, oh girl, yes, I did ask. I sure did, I sure did ask. You know, it's curiosity. Is that what somebody does? Is that, because I never knew that any type of department of health or doctors would be knocking on your motherfucking door and bringing your nasty ass down to their office to give you a cure. So I definitely would say something. Call your local um, department of health. Um, even if you can't find a number for them, I will call my local hotline, emergency hotline, or a police station or um, hospital and inquire. But I definitely would let it be known about this type of person. Like, it's sad that these would happen. But I've been seeing this a lot on YouTube that these young women have been contracting HIV from just one man. And it seems like they are purposely giving it to them. And like, what is the point? Why are you doing this? What What is the reason of purposely giving someone any type of disease that they cannot get rid of? You know what I'm saying? Now, gonorrhea is an easy cure. You'll get a medication for that and you'll be okay. 
but the HIV, you will also get a medication from that and you still will be okay. But I, I know that for people, even if someone was to catch a cold from another person, they feel some type of way. They feel violated. You know what I'm saying? If you give me some type of germ and cooties, I'm going to feel violated too. I might have to unalive you if I was to know that you did this purposely. Oh, dude, yes. You ain't got to worry about getting full blown AIDS because I'm going to kill you today. Okay. That's how my mentality would be. That's how my mindset would be. But I really feel like this needs to be reported, Antoinette, and you really need to just be there for your friend and console her. I don't know if a friend has any children because it wasn't mentioned, but make sure that she does go to her physician. Make sure that she does get a prescription. Make sure that she keeps her health insurance. Make sure if she doesn't have health insurance that she gets it because that way she can continuously afford her medication and there's no reason any lapse in coverage of medication or insurance, but also make sure that you're a friend to her and you're there for her to console her. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes we don't take people's suggestions, advice seriously. And then we have to learn the hard way. I'm not sure about you guys, but I never really want to learn anything the hard way. Like I really don't. We definitely have to look out and do our detective work on when we start dating a person or start courting a person or start speaking with the person. You'd really need to do your detective work in this day and age because you really don't know who you're getting with. That's why I don't like to do those apps, those dating apps, because you can tell me anything on the other side of this app. And then when I meet you in person, you could look like Magilla Gorilla. A broke down, broke bum, homeless Magilla Gorilla. You know what I'm saying? And you don't know what this person is. They could be psychotic. They could be a serial killer. It's all kind of things that you just really don't know when you're meeting on these people in these apps. So me personally, I definitely would do my detective work. Look, girl, look. Okay. I love my happy single life and I'm not about to be interrupted by anybody. But funny stories, not even funny, but like I was saying, some of these men are really weird these days. Okay. Um, even women too. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I was growing up, when I was younger, when I was in my teens, in my twenties, when men would approach you, they would do it with some class. I don't, you know, there are some that would just be like, yo, Hey, what's up, ma? I always would reply back with, I don't remember giving birth to you. Cause I don't. Okay. Don't call me ma. Cause I ain't your motherfucking ma. Okay. Anyway, they would come to you. They would approach you a little bit more civilized. Okay. There were some that weren't civilized and there were some that were, you know what I'm saying? So the other morning, um, uh, it probably was like Monday or Tuesday, more or less. It was Tuesday. I want to say it was Tuesday. Okay. I had finished dropping off the kids to school and daycare and I had to run into the grocery store to get pancakes, some fresh pet, her dog food. Right. And it was, it was, it was kind of early. It was like, um, it was, it was kind of early cause I did go somewhere before the grocery store. I went to the post office. First I went to the post office. So by the time I got to the grocery store, it was like nine o'clock. I went and did something else too. So it was like nine, nine thirty, right? So I ran in, I got her fresh pet and I went, you know, went walking back to my car. So in the lane, the lanes, you can, you can either go down or up. You know how some of the lanes in the parking lot, they have the arrows. So you got to follow the direction of the arrows. So, you know, it's early. Not too many people are out and about. So I'm like walking in the middle of the aisle to where my car was at. And I could hear the car from behind me approaching me because I can hear the music. I can hear the car and I could hear the music was like Hispanic music, right? So I'm starting to move over to the right because I can hear it. The guy in the car is screaming, not screaming, but he's like, uh, hey, ma'am, hey, ma'am, hey, ma'am, hey, mama, or hey, ma'am, one of those. So I'm thinking, you telling me to get out your way, basically. And I was moving out the way. So he stops the car, white car, this white car, he stops right alongside of me. And so I'm like looking because I didn't already moved out your fucking way. What more do you want? And he was like, you got a man, you got a boyfriend. I was like, what? And he was like, what's your name? And I was like, what? Because like, you just, I, I just was like, okay, what? And so he was like, what's your name? And I was like, what's your name? And so as soon as I said that this French bulldog, first I thought it was a pug cause they all have that, that same smushy face, but he was bigger. French bulldog pops up in the passenger window. You know, the windows already rolled down, pops up. So it had to be Tuesday because I remember the day before that I had that bad dream where the dog was chasing me. So he pops up, you know what I'm saying? I don't know where he came from. He probably came from the back. So, you know, I jumped back and as he was trying to tell me his name, the dog startled me. So I heard him say, that's D Dallas. And I was like, oh, how you doing Dallas? He was like, no, that's my dog's name. My name is Darnell. And I was like, oh, your dog is really cute. Oh, he's just a show dog. So I was like, okay, well, gotta go you're blocking traffic this is what i say right 
So he moves out the way and he tries to pull, he doesn't try to, he parks in an empty spot, right? Please tell me why the empty spot has to be next to my fucking car. All right, so he's on my passenger side and I'm like putting stuff in the passenger side, the dog's food, because I really didn't feel the need to open the trunk. Please tell me why he reaches out the car window, his car window, the driver's window, it's going all like this. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? You know, don't try to touch me. And he was like, no, I want to, I wanted to hold your hand so you could um, twirl around. I was like, excuse me, what? He was like, so you could twirl around for me. I said, first of all, we don't twirl around. Okay. That's not what we fucking do. We don't twirl around. How about you twirl around? Okay. He like, well, I, I really can't. I'm six, nine. So he gets out the car, mad tall for no reason. And he was like, you, you don't want to twirl around. I said, first of all, we don't twirl around. He goes and continues to say, that's cause you from New York. Y'all have that New York mentality. I'm like, how do you even know where I'm from? He's like, I can hear it in your voice. And I can tell, he said, I'm from Jersey. He said, I can tell. He was like, you know, you got that, that New York mentality. Come on, chill out and be calm. And I was like, first of well, we don't twirl at my age we don't twirl for no fucking body that's not what we do you're not about to get no back shots of me you're crazy he tried to say that's not what he was trying to do and then he tried to commence to get my phone number i was like i'm not giving you my phone number he was like well take mine i was like okay i'll take your phone number so i took his phone number in my notes he's like when you gonna call me i said i'll think about calling you i'll think about it he goes well you know if you call me you give me a chance girl you're gonna be addicted to me trust me when i tell you you'll be addicted to me i said okay bye have a great day girl when i tell you i hurried up and deleted that shit out of my motherfucking phone because i'm not about to call you darnell okay you act like a whole fool i ended up asking him how old he was because he seemed immature to me he said he was 40. i didn't know 40 year old men act like that twirling nobody's giving twirls out who am i to be giving you a twirl like what that's, I feel like that's disrespectful to any woman. And that's what they these young women do for some guys on these shows, whatever. But I'm not I'm not twirling for you. You're not about to spin me the fuck around to take a gander at how I look. Not happening today. I felt I felt more um I felt more interested in the dog versus speaking to him, to be honest with you. Like I was more into the dog than talking to him. I really could care less. But I just thought it was weird the way he approached me, the twirl thing and all that. And like I said. I would think about calling you, which I wasn't going to, but sometimes you have to tell them this because a lot of times I've noticed when you tell a man, no, you don't want to give them your phone number. You don't want to give them any type of time. They will get mad. Some of them have gotten mad and have assaulted women. So, you know, I just play along with it, but you goofy ass motherfucker. Ain't nobody calling you twirling. I don't know if he felt like that was cool for me to, to for just cool to say, or how I, I don't know, but I just feel like when you are trying to get to know somebody these days or you're dating someone you really 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 do need to do your homework and investigation because a lot of these men and women could be a little bit off and you do not want to be their next victim okay not me not i says the cat not i says april i don't want to be nobody's victim so i definitely make sure that i'm doing my homework or i'm, I'm deleting your number okay i'm deleting your number but honestly antoinette I really feel like you have to just be there for your friend. Whatever you do, do not bring up I told you so or I told you he was a no good ninja. She already knows that. She definitely already knows that, you know what I'm saying? But I definitely would reach out to any type of health department or hospital or community to where you can get it known, uh, put out there about what he's doing because purposely giving someone HIV is a crime and it's sad to say, but it's definitely a crime. You know what I mean? Um, I'm sorry for your friend, but I'm also happy that there is medication that is a lot better than when AIDS and HIV first came out. So she has an amazing chance of life. You know what I'm saying? She has an amazing opportunity of life. She just needs to take care of herself. She's got to get out this rut that she's in right now. And I'm pretty sure that it's a rut. It's a depression rut. But that's why I say be there for your friend because this is bad news and nobody wants any type of news like this. You know what I'm saying? Even just knowing that he gave me gonorrhea and not HIV, that would be depressing too. But you're giving out the whole package deal. It's very depressing. It's very disheartening. And I'm pretty sure that she's she's in a rut right now. Just be there for your friend. That's all I can really tell you. But I definitely would speak to someone in your community about getting his name out there. So that way the proper authorities can speak with him. You know what I'm saying? And then that way, if he did give it to some other women, maybe other baby mamas, they can get the help that they need. You understand what I'm saying? And if your friend, by chance knows any of his children's mothers, I would definitely have her reach out to them. But then again, you maybe want to be very cautious about that because if he feels like she's reaching out to his children's mother and she's telling him, well, he gave me HIV, you never know how that might retaliate him against her. So most importantly, reach out to your community and see what can be done in regards to him 
purposely giving out HIV. It's a sad thing, but if you look on YouTube, I don't know what's why it's been popping up on my page, but it might be because of the people that I subscribe to. It's a very big thing now. All of these states are like, there. there's a lot of people that have contracted HIV. Girl, that's why I like to keep my legs closed, keep to myself, because I ain't trying to die for no fucking body. Because if I do, you too, you're going to die too. Okay, period. So let's move on to the next real talk. Whatever. Okay, but she titled this, you cannot tell her nothing. Hello, Miss April. I hope all is well. I figured I would come to you with this issues, being that you have grown kids and grandkids. So who better to ask about someone who has some experience with children? So my sister has kids. She has three of them, ages 15, 12, and the youngest is eight. All girls, April. I only have one child, and she also is a girl, whom is 16 years of age. So me and my sister don't live that far from one another, maybe about 15 to 20 minutes drive, depending on traffic out here in Texas. So my sister's husband left her a while ago for another woman. He started a whole family and all that shit. Barely comes around for his three daughters, barely pays child support, just ridiculous. Anyway, my niece, the oldest one, who is 15, she comes over and spends the weekends with us often because her and my 16-year-old daughter are really close, close in age and just close in general. I have been noticing some grown behavior coming from my niece, and I'm not up for any of it. I spoke to my sister about this because she's a young lady, and the way these grown nasty men are these days, we as adults and parents need to make sure she is doing the right thing. So I recently found out from my daughter that my niece be sneaking out her room at night as soon as her mother lays down to go to sleep and meet up with some boy who is 18 years old. And this boy is nothing but trouble, according to what my daughter is telling me. He smokes weed all the time, never finished school from what I was told. He failed numerous times, so he never passed. So my niece is sneaking out the house for this dude, and she is only 15. I spoke to my sister about it, and all she could say is she probably looking for a father figure. Like, huh? What? That is all you can say? She didn't seem concerned at all about her daughter. My daughter just told me recently that my niece is smoking weed and drinking with this guy, too. He's nothing but a lowlife. I have been giving... I have been given his address and I am ready to send the police over to his mother's house because he's too old for my niece and he's leading her in the wrong direction. My sister doesn't seem to care too much because she's too busy working and worried about her life. However, her kids are a part of her life. Like I said, I only have one child and I really don't want my niece rubbing off on my daughter, which I don't think she will because my daughter is the one who is reporting all this back to me. I have not said anything to my niece about this because I don't want her pointing the finger at my daughter, but something's got to be done. Our mother did not raise us to be this way, and I really feel like speaking to my mother about this and my niece. What would you do if this was your family member? Now, what is her name? She didn't give me a name. She didn't give me a name. That's a verse she didn't even give. I didn't even know that she didn't give me a name through this whole email. Like, seriously, she, ain't nobody got a name. They, everybody is just nobody. Nobody got a name for this one. So the person who's writing us, we're going to call her. Oh, my God. I got to write it down because I'll forget that I made up a name for her. Okay? Um, we're going to call her. Oh, my God. I don't even know. Let's call her Um, Rochelle. We're going to call her. Um, We're going to call her. That's kind of a. That's kind of a, a big, we're going to call her Linda. Okay. We're going to call her Linda. So Linda is the one who's calling, um, who, who wrote me. Okay. Yeah. We're going to call, we're going to call the writer of this email, Linda. So Linda is concerned about her niece who is 15 years old, which is her sister's kid. One of her sister's kids. Linda's sister has three daughters, all three daughters, 15, 12, and eight. Okay. Can you imagine? Well, I have three daughters too, but I also have two sons, but she has three daughters. Okay. And Linda has one who's 16. So Linda's sister's husband then left her a minute ago for another woman and started a whole new family. Now that man, Linda's sister's ex-husband, or was it her husband? I don't know, I can't remember. Yes, husband. Linda's sister, we're gonna call Linda's sister Tammy because I don't want to keep saying her sister. So Tammy is Linda's sister, okay? Tammy is the one with the three daughters. So Tammy's ex-husband left her for another woman. He started a whole new family. He doesn't come around for his kids. He doesn't pay child support. And Linda has been saying to Tammy, her sister, listen, your daughter has been doing things that she has no business doing. She's messing with some 18-year-old boy who's no good for her. And all Tammy can say is, oh, she probably wants a father figure. She doesn't seem too concerned. She's more concerned with her own life, which is her 
her children are part of her life as well but she don't seem too concerned about her 15 year old daughter but linda is linda don't know what to do linda has been getting the scoop that her niece has been sneaking out smoking weed drinking the the young man is 18 years old lives at home with his mother of course because he's 18 he don't do nothing but smoke weed never finished school he's nothing but a problem okay and now she's out there doing what she has no business doing and she don't linda don't want her niece to rub off on her own daughter which she doesn't think she will listen let me tell you something linda what you do need to do what i would do i would go to my mama since your mother is um I would, I would go speak with my mom i definitely would and maybe get some parental advice from her because she's also your mother but she's also the grandmother of the grand of the of the nieces and she may need to put her foot down sometimes we got to bring it to our mamas because if you don't want to listen to me then i'm gonna bring it to mommy okay that's what i'm gonna bring we grown yeah we grown but we're gonna still bring this to our mother because she didn't raise us like that like she said it's sad because these young girls have no business following behind these men this is a man he 18 years old he has no business with the 15 year old he shouldn't be with her he's 18 god knows when he's going to be 19 but if he was a respectable 18 year old who was going to college and doing the right thing then it might not have been a problem but we got nothing but a, a weed toe in school dropout here that want to do nothing but drink and smoke weed he ain't even got no business drinking he's not of illegal age to drink you should send the police over to his mother's house you just should since you have his address i just would you know why because who knows what else he's trying to coerce your niece into doing hopefully they're not having sex at his age and he's a loser he doesn't seem like he's really got his head together he's probably trying to talk her into doing all type of things that she ain't got no business doing who knows but if she's sneaking out of her house for this low life then something has to be stopped did you tell your sister that she's been sneaking out the house because if it were me and you told me that my daughter is sneaking out the house after i go to bed oh girl it's gonna be a problem oh yes we're gonna have a problem you know what you may she may need to do since you want to be sneaking out and i and i hate to take anybody's privacy away from them you know but sometimes you got to take the doors off of the rooms since you want to sneak out and close and lock your doors we're gonna have to take the doors off the hinges sometimes you have to do that because some of these young women and young men they just really don't see where we'd be coming from and they just feel like we just be talking just to hear ourselves talk but in reality we've been through that we've been through life already and what i've been through i definitely don't want you to have to go through you understand what i'm saying so like a lot of times they just feel like we talking just to be talking and to hear ourselves and let me tell you this i don't be wanting to repeat myself to my kids when i used to have to have talks with them and tell them what to do i got tired of fucking repeating myself I did not want to hear myself. I felt like a broken record, okay? That would make me even more matter is to have to constantly repeat myself. Oh, I already told you some shit. But your niece seems like she's in a world of trouble. She's got herself mixed in with the wrong crowd. And I really feel like it's very important, Linda, to stop it and nip it in the bud while you can because God forbid she'd be pregnant. We don't want her to end up being a teen mother. Let me tell y'all, I was a teen mother. I was 17 when I got pregnant with my second child. I was 16 when I had an abortion, okay? um with my first my mother never knew that i was pregnant i was scared to tell her you know and i just wasn't ready well i i got sent away later on like about a year or two later to live with my dad in pennsylvania and that's where i met my you know my child's father my first son's father so being a teen mom is a lot of work because when you're a teen and you, you you have a baby we have to rely on people older family members to help us we have to rely on people to be there for us because we are teens and we don't really know much and we definitely don't have money and i just feel like sometimes people glorify being a teen mom it's it's not something that you want to glorify but i do give props to those teen moms who have made something of themselves and have pulled themselves up out of the trenches but it's not something that we really would want to encourage our children to do and I just feel like Tammy being your niece's mother it's like she's kind of like encouraging it because she's not putting a stop to it she's not doing anything she's just saying to you that she needs a father figure now I don't know how close you are with her biological father but sometimes we do need to reach out to the other parent but if he's not really being there he's not coming around for his daughters he's not checking for them he's not paying for child support then he's not even worthy of being the one to speak to your niece the one that is is the matriarch of the family which is your mother you know she's the grandmother and if she's anything like me one of those strict grandmothers then she needs to speak with her and you need to have your mother also speak with your sister tammy because if your mother didn't raise you like that what makes your sister feel like it's okay to allow her children to run amok and do nothing about it okay now god forbid the young lady comes up pregnant but we just spoke about somebody who was messing around with a dude who who contracted um contracted hiv and um gonorrhea 
God forbid this young lady, this this 15 year old girl contracts anything. It don't even have to be HIV. It could be herpes. It could be gonorrhea. It could be syphilis. Um, what other STDs is out there? You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody want to contract anything. And if her mother is letting her run wild in a muck like that, and she's really not too concerned. God forbid she probably don't even have her on any type of birth control or really even had to talk with her about using condoms and using birth control. Even though the schools do that today, it's still really great and beneficial for your parents to come say something to you about it. Some people feel a little embarrassed when their parents come and say to them or talk to them about any type of, you know, STDs or what have you or sexual, um, you know, protection. But girl, you don't want your kids to run around and have AIDS or HIV or any type of sexually transmitted disease or get pregnant. Somebody has to speak to this young lady. And you know something, Linda, you're an amazing sister because you're concerned, a very concerned aunt. And I would have a talk with my mother. The, the day you watch this, I would call my mother up and I would have a talk with my mother and let her know everything that's going on, what your daughter has been telling her. So that way you can have a conversation with your daughter. Your mother can have a conversation with your sister about how her granddaughter is acting or your mother can just go directly to the source, which is your niece. Now, I understand the part where you don't really want to talk to your niece about it because you don't want your niece pointing the finger at your own daughter for telling. But in reality, how was you even going to know without your daughter telling you? So I'm pretty sure regardless of who speaks to your niece, she's going to know that, you know, her cousin, your daughter, Linda, is the one that told. And it's OK. They will kiss and make up their cousins. Everybody has little arguments or, you know, disagreements and they'll make up. But in the end, it's like this. Your daughter is concerned about her. Your daughter is concerned about her cousin's well-being. And sometimes even having a talk with your daughter about how your niece is behaving, making sure that your daughter is on the right path might be something that you may need to do. Don't follow behind in your cousin's footsteps in wrong decisions because we're trying to help her out of the wrong decisions that she has put herself in currently. You know what I mean? But I just, you know what, we always, we definitely have to be more vigilant in our children's lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not perfect. Parents are no per are not perfect. We sometimes, we learn as we go along, you know what I'm saying? And that's a true fact. Sometimes we learn things as we go along because there is books on how to be a parent, but let's, let's be for real. Who's really sitting down and reading these books on how to be a parent? Like, I've never read a book on how to be a parent. I didn't even read the book on expecting parenting. You know that the doctors give you this big ass thick book on what to expect while you're pregnant? Like, what I I ain't expecting this to read this damn book because then nobody told me that I had to be back in school when I got pregnant. Okay, what to expect? I'm gonna just learn that shit as I go along. And as as a parent, we do we do make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. I've made plenty of mistakes as a parent in my lifetime. Sometimes we don't know how to approach the teen or the kids. Some people just don't know how to approach their children. Some people just approach their children in the most volatile way. Some people don't know how to sit down and have a full blown on conversation with their child. So sometimes we do have to reach out to other family members in hopes of getting help and being able to communicate. You know, it takes a village to raise a child. Y'all all know that this is a well-known fact. It definitely takes a village to raise a child. You know what I'm saying? But I hate to see when parents just put off their raising of children for them to just raise themselves because things like this can happen. She can get with the wrong crowd. This is the wrong crowd to be with. You got a young man and I'm not saying he's a bad dude because I don't know him personally, but just let alone knowing that he's 18, he's drinking, he's smoking weed and he's quit school doesn't really say too many good things about him. And now he's got this young lady sneaking out the damn house once her mother goes to sleep. I'll be sleeping right in the living room or wherever you sneaking out at, I'll be right there waiting, okay? When you think you sneaking out, that's when you're going to see my fucking ass right there. Like, oh, so where you going? Where we going? Where we going? Okay, where the fuck we going? Sometimes you even got to fool their asses. They have these little gadgets that you could put on the door. And as soon as somebody opens it, it just starts alarming. Those are really good for like if you have a pool in your backyard and you have like a little kid and they try to open it, you can hear that. Now, I don't know how that's going to work with a teen trying to sneak out. You know what I'm saying? But either here nor there, something definitely has to be done. I would definitely speak to my mom about it because she's the matriarch of the family and she has plenty of experience of being able to set y'all in the right path and she's the one who tammy is really going to listen to now tammy is your sister linda not saying i'm not sure she's your older or your baby sister but she's definitely probably not going to listen to your words of encouragement your words of advice but but your mama she's going to have to respect your mother and listen to what she's got to say that's the number one rule when we come to mamas we have to learn to respect them and we have to respect them and we have to listen so i definitely would have a phone call with my mother linda and let her know how your niece is behaving if you need to put your daughter on the phone which i really don't think you need to involve your daughter too much more you know enough information to the fact that 
this is what look you know more than enough information she's smoking weed she's 15 she's with somebody that's 18 i don't know if that is a statutory law thing can someone 18 mess with someone who's 15 i'm not really sure each state is different you know if it were my child i don't really know how i would feel about my 15 year old with an 18 year old but like i said some 15 year olds some 18 year olds are much different than this one that we're speaking on he might could be a really upstanding citizen and in school a book nerd so those are the ones that you really don't have to worry about too much so i hope not you know what i'm saying because everybody be putting on a facade and then you don't know them you think you know them and then they not that person just like the first young lady she said that he was great he was an upstanding guy he's not that person anymore he's changed and look at him he's still a dirty hoe bag okay that gave her something that she cannot get rid of and let's just help this young lady out right here at the age of 15 we don't want her to be in the same predicament no babies no any stds none of that we just need a child to be a child let a kid be a kid and stay in a place okay it's great that you are able to communicate with your niece and she has a great closeness with your daughter and let's keep that going but i definitely would think more or less like get your mom involved so that way she can put a stop to how tammy is feeling about her own children and then also she could put a stop to how her granddaughter is as is, is acting i'm telling you these young girls they be running wild some of these young ladies and you have to put a stop to them because at 15 they be feeling like they grown like i've been seeing them little 15 years old out there they be running their mouths they have no um respect for themselves let alone for somebody that's in the area while they running their mouths they will fight anybody some of them not all of them but some of these young young women and young men they they act totally over their age and like i know when i was 15 i wasn't sneaking out to see no goddamn boy okay that's not what i was doing i was still playing with dolls barbie excuse me because i'm a big barbie fan but yeah at the age of 16 i did get, end up having um you know pregnancy but the young man that i was pregnant to we was in school together in high school not saying it was right not saying it was right but um i wasn't sneaking out the window for him either he was a great guy he was his mother was into church uh, my mom liked him he was very respectable freddie was his name um his breath smelled though he had like very foul breath and we was boyfriend and girlfriend for like a little bit over a year but his breath you you know his breath smelled so bad and he was <sighs> And I don't understand why he couldn't smell his own breath because his nostrils were really big. Like he had like a big size nose. So there's no way that he could not have smelled his breath, but his breath. Sm <clears throat> my cousins, I would tell my cousin Kenya this all the time. And she would be like, why you didn't tell Freddie? And I just, I don't know. I didn't have the heart in me to say your breath smell, but I put up with that for like a year and a half. He was a really great guy though. He was really, really a great person, you know, but he just had like a little mouth problem. You know, he should have been carrying some gum around with him, but, um, he was a great guy. I, I wonder whatever happened to him. I hope he doesn't have bad breath to this day because we, we 50. So I always wonder whatever happened to him. I cannot for the life of me remember his last name. You know what I'm saying? But he was a really good guy. He was a really, you know, he was a really good guy. Um, but anyway, yeah, we got to keep these girls in check, y'all. Got to get these girls in check, these young ladies, these young men, because life is not simple. Life is hard out there. Okay, straight up, like life is hard. We got a lot of shit going on in this world and you got to protect your children you got to protect them because if you don't i'm getting all these weird calls today i got this call at eight o'clock this morning 8 17 from the philippines it rang like three times and hung up now i'm getting a call from seal beach california not really sure about that they didn't even say nothing i cannot stand what people call my phone and don't say anything now what i'm gonna have to do is i'm gonna have to go back and subscribe to my um robo killer which weeds out the spam calls you will not even hear your phone ringing and I had that service for like two years on my phone, two or three years, and it was great. But you know how stuff keep going up in price, going up in price, going up in price. And I'm like, oh, now y'all want me to pay $80 for the shit for a whole year? When I paid 40 for the first, 20 for the first year, 40 for the second year, and 49 for the third year, now you want me to pay 80 <laughs> I'll weed out them fucking spam calls myself, okay? So I spoke with my doctor last week. Um, she called me verbally over the phone just to come back with my lab results to prior to um, or my visit before uh, a couple weeks back. She wanted to give me my lab results. And also if my lab results were great, she was going to put me on Fentramine, which is a prescribed medication that helps you lose weight. Like, you know, deters you from eating a lot. Now, I used to take Fentramine before. And when I used to take it before, I was going to the medical weight loss clinic. I was going to the weight loss clinic. Remember how I used to go to weight loss clinic? I would go, sometimes I would go every week or sometimes I would go every two weeks. If you go two weeks, you get two weeks supply. But I really did like to go every week because I like to hold myself accountable. They will weigh you and such and such. 
you know, and then I would exercise on my own and I would go for walks every morning. Thank God the weather is cool now. So, you know, it's walking season. Okay. But um, I did lose a lot of weight from it. The only thing about the fetch me was it would, I had like the driest mouth. Okay. My mouth was always dry. I was always drinking water, but it still was dry. So I used to have to either chew gum or I'd have to, you know, have mints all the time. And that would help me. But it helped me lose weight, but also helped me lose weight because I exercised. I did what I had to do. Now, there were a lot of people that would come to the weight loss clinic and they just would expect that the fetch me to just help them lose the weight and no, no workout at all. And I'm not a workout queen. I don't do all of that work and I'm not about to stay in there for in the gym for hours. I don't do shit like that. Let me just go for a walk and do a couple of min minutes of exercise in my house. There's this lady that I like to watch. She does seven minutes exercises and seven minutes is good for me. Okay. But it also did get me in shape and I did lose a lot of weight, but I also learned how to stop eating past 730. Okay. That was my one problem. But anyway, so she had to go through my lab results because for a while, I wasn't able to get on a fentanyl because, you know, I have high blood pressure and it's not good because it uh, it can mess up your liver. OK, so finally, my blood pressure, my blood pressure is stable with the medication that she's been giving me, which is great. Finally. OK, finally. And I've been taking the fentanyl since Thursday. Um, so I took it on Thursday morning and I forgot to eat when I tell you. I didn't eat nothing all day long. I didn't even have like a um a hunger pain or anything. When I tell you I went to bed, I had one little chicken strip. It was like probably like this, like this little. One little chicken strip. It was a little bit fat in this. That's all I ate the whole day and was fine. Like I didn't even want to eat anything. So Saturday, what did I eat? Um, excuse me, Friday was the same thing. Saturday. I, I didn't eat nothing all day until like 7:30. Tati went to Burger King. And so I wanted a bacon king. I ate that, but I didn't eat all of it. Normally I'll eat the whole thing. And then yesterday, uh, Sunday, I didn't eat anything. We went to the, um, we went to the, um, swap meet and I just had my water. And then when I came home, I ate a couple of Doritos and that was it. And so Tati ended up having to make me a smoothie to, cause I wasn't, I wasn't interested in eating. So this morning I did take my pills and I didn't eat yet. Um, getting a little bit hungry though, but so I'm going to go downstairs cause I already made me some breakfast, but I also did have a smoothie. Tati made me a smoothie. So I guess this is going to be my lunch and I probably won't eat anything else today, but yeah. So hopefully this works for me again. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I need to get thinner. All right, girl. I need to get a little bit thinner. All right. Cause this shirt that I got on, let me tell you about this shirt. This ain't no fucking shirt. All right. This is a dress from forever 21. And I do have pictures of me wearing this as a dress, but bitch, this shit don't fit like a dress now because it's not going over my ass and my hips. So it's got to be worn as a shirt. Okay. But it was a dress. It was a dress. It was a dress. Yeah. And I'm going to save it because you know why I like it as a dress. And once I lose all this weight, I'm going to wear it again as a dress, as a dress. Yes. Okay. But I love you guys. I love you all. Or make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Check the description box. Make sure you check out my website. Check the description box. I love y'all. Stay beautiful. Stay blessed. Stay safe. Stay out the way. Stay diva and divolicious. And I will see y'all in another video. Okay. Bye.